Hi guys and well more guys I guess. Welcome back to a new video of my series on how to write generic music. Today we are going to continue the trend of alternating between one of the more mainstream adjacent kind of fake poser metal genres on the one hand and on the other hand some old school traditional actual true metal genres. So today we are going to do the latter and what better subgenre for that than some old school death fucking metal. So as the name suggests, death metal is really brutal and aggressive and straightforward, straight to your face. Sometimes slow, sometimes fast, a bit groovy but really not too groovy. So again, today will be kind of an act of balance. And also we're getting into the whole aesthetics of the genre lyrically, so just a little trigger warning, there will be a lot of dying and killing. So it's gonna be disgusting and quite visceral and I'm trying to keep it short today and trying to keep it straightforward straight in your face to deliver this raw old school aggressiveness. So let's get on writing and see what we come up with. So tempo for today is going to be 155 BPM and also I already did a little mixing template which gets us somewhat in the ballpark sound wise which mainly means that the guitars have this boss metal zone pedal which is really characteristic for all these old school extreme metal genres and also for the drums I dug out good old superior drummer here which has just a more raw and old schoolish sound to it. Also for the guitar tuning this guitar is is tuned to standard drop D because I didn't want to go any lower because of the string tension but drop D is not low enough for death metal so I used this whammy pedal to just tune it down another whole tone so it's in drop C what you hear is drop C what the guitar is actually tuned to is a drop D all right let's start off with writing some riffs so for the intro I thought we need something to establish kind of a rhythmic motive here and in my mind I have like like tom hits and snare fills before we actually go into real rhythm here. So let's see what we come up with here. Something like this. For the drums I want something to enhance this rhythm. Dum -dum 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 and let's go for the tom hits here. So for the second half we switch from tom hits to cymbals like this. And then we can go in the first real rhythm riff. And I was riding around a bit on the first fret. So let's really go down to the lowest note. So for the drums you can guess what we are going to do with the kick drum. <laughs> we are going to go full double bass of course and I'm hearing like snare on all quarters here and maybe like hi-hats. So this is also a really death metal thing whenever the guitars do something special it's doubled by some crash hits here uh, within the rhythm. So I already had kind of the idea of bringing like a little touch of blackened death metal in here with some 16th tremolo picking and obviously death metal we're gonna have some blast beats. <laughs> I really like the ending here. Dun, 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 dun. So let's do a blast beat here. So double bass again, snare on the off beat. So I went for the right symbol again with having the right bell on the quarters like ding, dig, ding, dig, ding, dig, ding. <laughs> So after the blast beat I think we can reuse this one here, copy paste. So next up we would need something chorus like I guess. So let's come up with a bigger structure of a riff. And also I want to reuse the rhythmic motifs from the intro so it kind of binds the song together a bit more. Uh, let's see what we had here. And then we go into the chorus reusing this. So 
So to keep it really death metal, we are going for blast beat again. And this time I really want to go just on the eighths with the kick and again off beat with the snare. Mm, and then we will add some more characteristic cymbal hits here and there. I like how the cymbals just go like bam 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 bam. <laughs> and then it just falls back to the regular open hi-hat beat. <laughs> Maybe go for right bell. All right, so we have this very kind of rhythmically weird uh, riff. Maybe changing the time signature. I'm just going to change it once in the very last bar, just for the software, so it looks nice and neatly. So let's go like solo drum fill here. Yeah, let, let's repeat some stuff. Seriously, just go for this one. So I was listening to the whole thing here again, and it's pretty much in your face all the time without any breaks. So I think we kind of can give the listener a little breather here and going a bit slower and have a bit of a bigger structure, like a C part, bridge part that starts off slow. And there is also one more trope with the drums I want to do, which is whenever drums get slow in death metal, they don't really get Get slow. <laughs> Something always has to be fast. Even if we just go kick snare snare on the three here, we can't just go like trash symbols on all quarters. We need like the right symbol playing eighths. A heavily palm muted more staccato rhythm for the guitars. Something like this, maybe just single string picking here. Yeah, and now spice up the drums by doing some of these in rhythm, but not all of it. Syncing up the kick drum to your rhythm guitars is so modern metal and we deliberately don't want this. Da -da -dum, da -da -dum. Let's just take these here. Now we have to kind of ramp up the intensity. I think we are just going to do the same rhythm, but not on one string, but on full power chords here. And more intensity for the drums by switching cymbals and maybe even switching the speed here. So you got this longer, slower part, which kind of is a bit boring. So let's spice it up with adding a guitar solo here. Keep the pedal for the characteristic tone. Just change the M, change the cap, turn down the treble and the presence a bit, add maybe some reverb. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's throw in some quick music theory here. I want to write a death metal song or a death metal solo. What scale do I use? And the short answer is you don't. So the basis of your melodic content is the root note, the minor second, the minor third and the major third, which is talking in frets zero, one, three and four. <laughs> And how does it go from there? Well, it kind of depends, like whatever floats your boat. The thing that matters is you got these first four notes right, everything else kind of up to you. And also you can always change it, like you don't have to stick to that. That's why it doesn't kind of make sense to talk about scale in this context here, because whatever throws off the balance, whatever throws off the expectations of your audience is what makes death metal sound like death metal. You have this beginning, which is real characteristic, but you can also use the second fret. I used it earlier in the rhythm when I went like there's the second fret is in there as well like it's not forbidden so use a lot of half tone steps in there definitely but you don't have to stick to a certain set of seven notes because this also will make it sound melodic in some form even if the scale is wonky if you stick to the scale it will sound melodic eventually and another thing is people keep referencing to the death metal typical not scale as phrygian it's not phrygian like j just because it starts with a half tone step doesn't mean it's phrygian Phrygian is 0, 1, 3, 5, not 0, 1, 3, 4. It's a different thing. You have these... <laughs> 
have two half tone steps right after another, which means it's not a diatonic scale at all. It's it's none of the seven modes. This kind of general approach here, half tone steps, not sticking to a scale, not even caring too much which notes I'm exactly playing and just improvising a bit, memorizing some of it and hopefully I come up with a good solo here. Let's see. <laughs> So after a bunch of improvising, let's try some solo takes here. That's the one, we're taking this one. So you could see in the beginning of the solo I was really sticking to that scale. With these notes and also with... When I went up here. But then when I went up the fretboard even further... I came out here and it still sounds like the same scale, but make no mistake, we just used... And now we're using... These are different notes, but you don't necessarily notice because it's all like half steps, half steps, half steps. And really in the end I was just playing what felt comfortable on the guitar, like... <laughs> and just ending on the root note and it, it sounds good, like even if it's just a bunch of random notes, literally. You just play it really quick and it, it sounds okay, like... <laughs> And whenever some smart pants comes up and is like, oh yeah, that was pretty fast, but it wasn't tight. Like you, you weren't playing the right amount of notes for that measure. Just give him the classic, excuse me, ever heard of septuplets? Like I was obviously playing like nested, dotted, quintuplet, triplets. Like couldn't you hear that? I mean, what are you, some kind of retarded or something? All right, let's go on with the song. There's one thing we didn't do yet, which is like, a hammer blast, a bomb blast, a bo bomb blast? I don't fucking know. Like the, the, the blast beat where the snare is on all 16th notes, like the fastest possible blast beat. And I still want to include that, like this. Something like this. Yeah, let's, let's, let's build up to that. Let's make a little transition here. <laughs> This will be our fast blast beat riff here. And we're going to get into that by some intro where we just have one side of the guitars and we need some drum intro here. Tom hits again. <laughs> And then we're completely bomb blasting this shit. Yeah, I guess go back into the chorus once more and then call it a day. I'm just gonna copy paste this right after here. Yeah, we need some kind of outro. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's cool. Yes, please, this. All right, let's go for some bass. Uh, for the bass tuning, by the way, same procedure as for the guitars. My five string bass, lowest string is tuned to B. So I just used the same whammy pedal to tune it up a half step. So it's C as well. So my lowest string on the guitar and low string on the bass are the same note. And I will probably not leave the lowest string when playing the bass now. And also I just played along with the song. I tried to go finger finger picking this time never tried that before uh, it's about time so
All right, so that's it for the instrumentals. Next up, vocals and lyrics. Let's see. So first off, let's find out what we are going to sing about today. What is death metal usually about? Well, it's in the name death yeah basically death comes in two forms either by killing or dying and we did already do the deathcore video a few years back and i kind of covered the the killing side of things there with the lyrics and also the music video so today i think i want to go more into the dying direction and uh, discover that a bit and another thing with death metal is that it is really rooted in these 80s 90s slasher horror movies so everything is a bit trashy and a bit over exaggerated and not really meant to be taken too seriously. And quite a bit of death metal songs are actually about zombies, kind of, <laughs> like being undead, being a zombie. So I just have to come up with some lyrics uh, exploring that kind of being a zombie feeling. So yeah, let, let's do that and I'll talk to you afterwards. I cranked out some lyrics in about a good hour or so something <laughs> to give you the quick rundown basically we were killed and buried alive and then we came back to life crawled out of our grave and took revenge on whoever killed us that's basically the plot that's it there's not more to it and i also found that death metal lyrics are not necessarily substantial but more descriptive so there are some words you just have to use like feasting or maggot infested that's like an all-time classic you cannot write any death metal lyrics without something being maggot infested go for the butcher knife slaughter your child and wife yes we are also murdering children and women because well <laughs> it's death metal what did you expect um, for the vocal style very low sitting crawling voice and how i written it down by now i think i'm going to do some like question and answer things so i will do kind of a question in a lower voice and then answer with a more screaming voice and two tracks are totally enough for this song let's just get right into it and and start <laughs> Going for the six feet under grunting here. Five. My right. Two. The pain. Two. The time. The pain. Your time. <laughs> oh man. Get by the right, I go take my revenge on you, report your call, your noise. Sick, that's it for the low growls. Let's go for the screams. Yeah! Yeah! Sad, sad, baby! Yeah! Yeah! Sad, sad, sad! Sad, sad! Sad, sad, sad! my neighbors <laughs> All right, there we go. That, that's it for the lyrics. Yes, I actually, I honestly, I think that's it. All right, guys, you know the drill. I'm gonna do the mix really quick and I'm doing that off camera because it's boring to look at and I will talk you through afterwards what I did. Uh, it's probably not much, but hey, who knows? All right, so let's talk you through the mix. Um, to be honest, I didn't change that much from the template I was working from. So I'm just, yeah, going to show you what was in that template to begin with, I guess. So as you can see here, these are all my tracks. There is not too much going on. Two thirds of this are the drums, which is what I want to start right now with. Uh, this is how they sound like. So 
so as you can hear um, I was really going for a more authentic old schoolish sound that's why I used the superior drummer um, metalheads EZX expansion in the first place this is like a really old school metal drum kit with five toms and like half a dozen uh, crash cymbals and not this modern minimalist approach and humanizing wise uh, I don't like it for the kick I kept it for the snare and pretty much everything else for the toms and for the cymbals so the more I could humanize the better and yeah you can see the same goes for the programming you can see here that every little step is always a bit too late so it's not all perfect on grid which gives you a more human feel to the whole playing sound wise didn't really do too much all I did was on the snare and the kick and it's just different iterations of compression saturation and EQ same goes for the snare we just got different EQ saturation transient designer another compressor in various steps so the most important thing is to get your kick drum and your snare drum rather short rather small rather contained because we have so much kick and so much snare going on and the more kicks you have the smaller the individual kick has to be in order to not overload your sonic space so the kick drum is really clicky doesn't really have a lot of bass not a huge fundament it also doesn't ring out uh, very long it's just very chick 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 short precise clicky same goes for the snare almost no reverb very quick harsh snare and the whole cymbals just got very basic eq that's pretty much it so these are the drums Continuing with the bass, we just got the same bass amp. I always use quite a bit of EQ, a bit of smiley facing here, but that's definitely something I did on purpose to keep it really like high end, low end, and not a lot of mids. I think that's kind of what makes this death metal sound as well. Quite a bit of compression, a bit of taming the low end. And yeah, that's the bass. I think most comes actually from the fingered performance that it almost sounds like I, I'm slapping it all the time. So rhythmically it's a bit less precise uh, than it would have been with a pick, but I really like the these slapping sounds throughout. It just gives the performance a bit more punch, I really like that. Next up, guitars, and I already told you, most important thing is that Metal Zone pedal from Boss. Uh, you can see it here, here it's called Metal Tone. It's probably called a little bit differently in your MSIM as well for legal reasons, but trust me, it is based on that. And if you have a MSIM with metal stuff, it's gonna be in there, it's the black and orange one. And this time I didn't turn all the knobs up to 11 like the last time I used it, because because uh, I was memeing a bit less this time. Only thing I did for the guitars is changing up the actual amp for the left and right guitar. So you can see the right guitar is like a PV5150 and the left guitar is a Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. Uh, they both uh, go through the same cap though, so it sounds somewhat similar. They also have a different mic, just to give a bit more of separation between the left and the right guitar channel, so they don't, don't exactly sound the same. And as same for for the bass, uh, quite a bit of smiley facing out some some mids here, which is something you probably wouldn't do in a more modern setting. But like back then, I think just that's that's a, that's the sound. That's the death metal sound. And like when you don't have a lot of these mids, that they sound very crisp and very clear, even though they're actually not that hard on the high end as well. Next up, solo guitar, uh, lead guitar, pretty much nothing to it. It's just same pedal, a different amp, a bit of reverb and a bit of EQ and that's it. <laughs> And which brings us to the last two channels, which are the vocals. So I treated the two vocals a bit differently, like the low crawling ones and the high up screaming ones. I'm having some saturation on here, some compression, and that's pretty much it. So very basic stuff as well. I put some reverb on the screaming vocals only, not on the growls. And that just helps them to be as well a bit more separated. So this whole question answer thing goes on very nice. <laughs> 
Das wäre dein Füße. Hussein. Alle Safari, jetzt ist er dann Pink. And one little effect I did was here after the solo, we have like this intro to the uh, very fast blast beat part where I have these, <laughs> these super nasty six feet under like crawls here. I just added a little bit of delay on that just because I thought it's it's too boring otherwise. So that's what that section sounds like. <laughs> So in conclusion, drums are more high up and very like attacky, very clear on the transients, very short sounding. The bass is very sm smacked, which comes a lot from the performance. The guitars are a bit scooped in the middle to give it this more um, aggressive death metal sound. And the vocals are pretty much as dry as it gets. Very basic mastering. All right, guys and other guys. So this was my take on the whole old school death metal kind of vibe. Uh, I hope you enjoyed i hope you maybe learned something and as always i will show you the whole song now did a little music video hope you enjoy that so take care and see you in the next one Ah!